Of course, as self-defenders, we make every effort to de-escalate, escape, and evade an encounter. But if you can't do that, you got to know when it's time to defend yourself. Hi everyone, this is John with today's Active Self-Protection Lesson. Today's lesson comes to us from Mandeville, Louisiana, and it's a shooting inside of a convenience store that we're going to see build up in significant ways. It's going to teach us the importance of verbal judo, of de-escalation, escape, and avoidance, but also when that time comes of using your force multiplier, defending yourself, and getting out of there. If you go read the news story, the firearms instructor in this video was declared to be justified in what he did. So that's going to color everything we're going to talk about here. This guy in the blue shirt in front is going to create problems in this particular video. He is starting to argue with the clerk and give him a hard time and be unstable and really jawing at the clerk where the clerk's talking on the phone and calls the cops on him, I believe. And this guy comes back and he's giving him a hard time. He starts throwing things around and the guy's trying to kick him out. Well, you know, these things do happen. Remember, you know, crazy people show up everywhere. And this guy now in the black shirt and the blue jeans, you can see is openly carrying a firearm on his right hip here. And he is a firearms instructor who teaches other people how to do this stuff. And so he's just kind of watching in the background and staying cool. And the, the crazy guy's trying to get him involved. And our firearms instructor's not really getting involved. He's staying cool. I notice in his body language, he's really not having a hard time. But this guy's not going away. There's some very interesting things to be learned from this. We'll talk about them in a minute. But the guy finally leaves and, and he comes back again and throws some stuff at the guy. And now our instructor follows him outside because he's heading for his car. And as the guy's heading out to his car, I want to notice here that he's heading for the car and this guy cuts him off and he wants to fight. So the instructor heads back into the convenience store. And as he does, you can actually see he has his gun in his hand and he's pushing this guy away, telling him, get away from me, man, get away from me. You're threatening me and I don't want to fight you. So now he's got this gun in his hand. He keeps pushing this guy off him and the guy just won't let him go. That's how insane this guy is. He is actually pushing on this guy who has a gun in his hand, tells him that he feels like his life is at risk and the guy's got a hold of him and pushing him. Now, one of the big things that this is where it's all going to come to a head because he pushes him back into a spot and our good guy goes back to a spot that you can see here that it's a dead end, that he doesn't have any more room to move and give this guy any room. And finally, when he feels like there's nothing more I can do, he takes a shot right there and shoots him right in the center of mass. And you notice the guy's still up and still doing his thing though. And so our good guy has to finally get him off him. He finally feels enough pain that our good guy's able to get away. I'm going to back up now and I want to learn some lessons from these. And the first one, of course, is knowing what fights you're going to get into. When this guy starts getting crazy, you know, if you can, just get out of there if you can see this stuff coming. This guy's been told to get out. And I love here that the firearms instructor tries to stay out of it and tries to just kind of leave it alone. Now, now again, he in the end, what he did is what he had to do in the moment. But we are going to talk about a couple of things that maybe he could have done that maybe would have been a little bit different in this one. Although again, I'm not going to, you know, Monday morning quarterback, but maybe just learn some lessons. The first one here is that I don't know that I would have followed this guy out of the store. You know, it, it's just causing problems. Call the cops and let them show up and deal with the guy. The guy's out of the way and you don't have any problems here. Now, when this guy goes to his car, great, let him get in his car, just watch him from a distance instead. But our guy's trying to, I think, get to his car and this guy cuts him off. And one thing that I love that this instructor did is he kept his distance. You notice he doesn't let the guy close on him and that was a great idea. Keeping your distance, especially when you got a firearm on you, is absolutely the way to go. He tries to go back in and the guy follows him. And I wanna talk about him having his gun in his hand here. Is this a deadly threat right now? Well, we don't know all that's being said. So, you know, the DA said he was justified. I'm going to go with that. But what I notice is, is that because he has his firearm in his hand, he's only got one hand left to defend himself. He might here have been better served to leave the gun in its holster for the moment and use both hands to defend himself if he had the empty handed skills. This is one of the reasons that I recommend that every firearms carrier have significant empty handed skills so that when something like this, this draw happens, you can use your hands to defend yourself and you don't end up having to go to the firearm. Now he gets stuck in a corner here and I'm not blaming him for that at all, but notice he does still need his hands here. If he had significant empty handed skills, he might have been able to solve this one without having to go to the firearm. I do notice here that he, when he did decide to shoot, and this is it right here, look at his backstop. Right on the other side of his perp is the, the clerk at the store, and that's not a great backstop there. I mean, you do what you got to do in the moment, but that's why marksmanship is so important. And he still has to use it. This guy is shot, but he's not out of the fight. The guy still needs to be stopped. So don't think for a moment that just because you pulled the trigger even and shot somebody's center mass with your JHP rounds, they're not going to go down immediately. 
the end of the day, the district attorney said that this man was justified. I'm going to take that as good enough. Maybe a couple of opportunities here to take some different ways, but at the end, he got out of there without getting hurt and he covered his ass.